All right, so let's look at the text. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as the light. For I desire steadfast love, not sacrifice, the knowledge of God, rather than burnt offerings. But like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. There they faithlessly dealt with me. So let's just let's just break this out. There is parallelism going on here. So there is debate. Okay. So there is debate. And so I don't want to I don't want to make it sound like it's it's perfect 100 percent But let's just work through here very briefly. So you have a comparison here. This is a comparison. And then you have a this is the subject, the actors. This is um if let's let's go to the larger context. Um, so if we if we can come well here, let's just do this here. So we can go over here to Hosea six. So everyone should be able to see Hosea six on my left. So Israel and Judah are un, unrepentant. Okay, so this is really the actors we can identify as as Israel. They are they have transgressed. And then the object is the covenant. So this is the action. Coming down here. You have in verse 8. So let's just write this down here. So in Hosea 6, uh, sorry, 6, 8. We have a reference to Gilead. Okay, is a city. All right, and then up here, uh, prior to, we have a reference to Ephraim and Judah. So we have Ephraim and Judah. So these are places. Okay, and th that you'll see the significance in a moment here. Okay, so we have. Like Adam, they transgressed the covenant. So, so here, this seems to be strongly implying this is referring to, to Adam's, Adam's breaking of God's covenant. And then there's a, there's a parallel idea here that's either being expanded upon or synonymous. And so again, you have, you have the actors are same actors coming here. The action is faithlessly, and the object is God. And then here's a place. Okay. Now, the, the challenge here is, are these two saying the same thing? Are they expanding? Now, people will say that, that because there's a location here, this location should Adam should be a location. There is a reference to Adam in Joshua three sixteen. It's very obscure. It's 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 not a place known of great importance in Israel, and so, so some people will say that they'll change this to at Adam. Okay, it is possible to see that the 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 grammar is very difficult. The preposition that would normally describe location is is not there so i really think that like is the best interpretation so like adam as a person they transgress the covenant so just as adam broke the covenant israel also breaks the covenant and there is an emphasis on a place where they where they broke the covenant and whether you see in israel as the breaking or a specific place like gilead or Ephraim, fair enough, but I don't think I don't think it's appropriate to identify these two together. It's it's not a black and white issue for sure. Now, what's really interesting is in the Septuagint, which is a non-inspired translation. In the in the Septuagint, we call that the LXX. This is the Greek translation of the Bible before the coming of Christ. They translate it man. So the Septuagint translates like Adam as like man, really, really powerful. They understood after the writing of scripture, after the writing of the Old Testament, 
that this reference was not to a place, Adam the place, but they saw it as a reference to man. So I would say this is probably the the strongest confirmation that we should really accept this as a person. Okay. It is debated. All right. It is debated fair enough, but I, but I think we're going to go to another passage. I think it's, it's, it's even stronger. The importance for us here, it's just so everyone's clear. If this is the case, there is a covenant with Adam. That's the big takeaway. Okay. If this is true, this is a covenant. The other thing that I want to note on is when we talk about, when we discuss the, the Mosaic law, people will often say this is just external shadow type. That's, that's, that's one interpretation, okay? One possible interpretation, all right? That is partially correct, but notice this here, okay? I desire, this is God speaking, I desire steadfast love not external. This is external. This is internal. This is eternal, right? Steadfast love is eternal. Okay. And this is the love that God gives for Israel. Knowledge of God. <laughs> Knowledge of God. Internal. Knowing God. Rather than burnt offerings. External. So to, so to only see the Mosaic law, the old covenant as purely external shadow and type, just that points to the reality is deficient. Does everyone see that? There is an internal, eternal component here and you see it explicitly. And so the question is, if this is only in its fullest, just a shadow and a type pointing to the to substance, did Israel, those that truly believed, did they not have the substance? Was God only externally a God to them? Was it only a, a physical, temporal relationship? And, and we, we, have to, we have to adamantly say, no, there's this internal, eternal component. So I do, I do want to draw our attention to that because that is so important. Again, it's just an aside that maybe you just need to put that at the, in, in the back of your mind for them when we come to the Old Covenant, we're looking at relationship between Old and New Covenant and then comprehensively in the covenant of grace. So, so important for us to consider 